You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is truth. Amen. Welcome to the What is Truth radio program. Here in studio, our panel, Kevin Deegan, John D. Giuseppe, and yours truly, Dr. Michael Caesar. And it's it's December, and here we go, folks. We're, we're into that time of year, and I, and I stumbled across an article here in, in Search of Christmas in uh, U.S. News and World Report under the Culture and Ideas section, and uh, says, you know, Christmas is really a passion in the United States of America. 96% of Americans say they celebrate it in some form or other. And and for many of them, it triggers uh, a remembrance of times past when Christmas was more peaceful, uh, maybe more pious, uh, maybe more focused on the birth of the Savior than the gaudy commercialism that we see today because, you know, Christmas today has become, well, in some places, he describes it as a raucous revelry of bacchanalian indulgence more akin to Mardi Gras or New Year's Eve than the uh, silent holy night that we sing about. And I just thought, you know, we kick it around here and take a look at it because here we are. We're on the eve of it in a, in a few weeks, and it's going to be with us, and, and I'm getting ready to uh, enjoy it with my family, and mm-hmm. I, I think you, you guys are with yours, and uh, I, I know the way we do it around our house is different uh, than maybe the way I grew up, but uh, we're going to try and take a look at the tradition, the history, and the scriptures on it, and see why is it we would even look it does something like the birth of the Savior. So that's kind of where we're going with today's well, show. And I just want to remind the people, because uh, <clears throat> they're always giving me this piece of paper here, you can find us at youtube.com uh, slash Pastor Michael Caesar MD. Click the red subscribe button, whatever that means. And then click the notification bell so you can get alerts, exclamation mark. But but the thing is, you can go to our website, Church. Org. That org and press click on sermons. And there you go. And you can, and you can go. And Caesar is spelled C E S A R. Yeah. I've always had problems with that. I've <laughs> Me too. So I never got it right. I went, I went school. to, uh, when I, when I sent you, uh, when I sent you that, um, those vitamins and, um, I went to put your name and I said, for crying out loud, I can't remember how to spell his name. <laughs> I get five off on every paper for misspelling my but, name. But yep. Mike, Christmas is interesting and there's something that when you become, a student of the Bible, when you become a, a saved, born again Christian, that you realize that the real, the real miracle was the uh, was e- Easter, if you will, Resurrection Sunday, the uh, Christ being raised from the dead, sure, and nailing our sins uh, to the cross. And we'll save that for maybe this Easter season. But there was something that I read in this article that you were talking about that I found interesting is that they maybe put an emphasis on the birth of Jesus Christ because they're wanting people to know that he was human. Yeah. He was half God. He was half man. And and we do, they don't want people in those days, it, according to this article, I, th- I thought it was interesting theory, that people will say, well, Christ was totally a spirit. He was a spirit. He was a he was a ghost that yeah, walked. One of the on heresies earth. early on, right. right, Kevin? Docetism, you know. Oh, that he was yeah. just See how a smart spirit. the guys are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And also that uh, another one is where he was baptized. That's where the spirit. Oh, the entered spirit into came him down at that time. And yeah. Entered into him, and then <laughs> yeah. he became the Christ. Then, the Christ yeah. Then. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's it's interesting. And um, in the article, and of course, in America, we we. It was just a picture of, of, of Israel where we just get to the point where we take any kind of holiday and make it a, a drunk fest, a, a turkey fest, a football fest. Uh, we forget the meaning. So many times we forget the, the meaning of, of the holidays that we have. We talked last week, was it, or two weeks ago about the Thanksgiving holiday and what it really meant as a Christian, what it really meant to America as a Christian birthed nation. Yeah. But we tend to... Um, we and this is what the God doesn't want: the covetedness. The you know, he, he wants you to, and, and again, he he wants you to be joyous. He wants you to make merry, but you need to have balance. And while you have this balance, you must always know who is the apple of your eye, who is the focus of your life, and that's your God. If you live your life that way, and you make God your focus, He will bless. 
He will bless you with, with merry things. He will bless you uh, in the things that you do in your life that bring you enjoyment, whether it be watching football or whatnot. But when you take, when you take the things that are supposed to be the, the offshoot and make them the focus, that's where I think you, you, you become out of order. And I think we've seen this in Scripture, nation after nation after nation after nation, even the, even the um, uh, Kevin, the Gentile nations, the Babylons and whatnot, they get so big, and then they start focusing more on the, on the party than they do what got them there. And, uh, and, and I think we're seeing that with America today. Well, how many folks after the holidays need a vacation? Right. They're so burnt out <laughs> right. from right. Right. all of the things that they're doing, rushing here, rushing there. That's not what it's about. No, it's not. It's no, it's not about shopping and No, it's not. And and I tell uh, you look at some some research of Christmas in America and, and its origins and you say, "Wow, is that the way it happened?" I thought it just so it was it there always just little Santa Claus and and but no, they had to kind of sway people's mind again from the gutter. So if you do that research, but I I used to like to tell the kids that that this uh, the Santa Claus he gives gifts, God gave a gift. You know, the birth of his son was a gift to mankind. Uh, so, you know, John three sixteen, and that what we do is we we give gifts. We give the gift of love, telling people we care about them, we love them. We certainly can't do it like God did. God gave the ultimate gift, and teaching that. But then again, all right. So, what do we do? We give many, many, many gifts to our children, to our to our our family and whatnot. And it dilutes it dilutes the meaning of the word giving. And to understand, because giving is 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 in scripture, it's charitable. When you when you do something for somebody else, whether it be mow their grass, uh, help them with some help them with some bills, or go out and buy them something, you're taking something that has value to you, and you're giving it to them. It could be your time, it could be your dollars, and you're giving it to them. It's charity. So, and, and so in a little way, that's what we're doing for the Christmas holiday. But again, we don't. We we, we go into debt. We go into debt and pay for Christmas for the next two Christmases in our debt. And we, uh, uh, once again, the debauchery of, of the American spirit when it comes to these holidays. And we're looked on, oh, you guys are just killjoys. No, we're not killjoys. We're not killjoys. There, uh, there is a deeper meaning and there is a deeper peace. If you understand, you know, the, as, if you are these holidays, the, the, these Christian holidays, because they were Christian holidays before they were American holidays, right, Mike? Well, well, again, uh, the whole point of having a relationship with God comes from the Bible. The Bible is the word that tells us uh, how God created, how God brought forth the nation Israel, how God brought forth the Messiah, how God worked uh, not only through the Messiah during his life, burial, uh, resurrection, giving him the spirit of holiness and raising him from the dead, but then working with his disciples after that. And when, when you're in search of Christmas and these people, again, these uh, Americans that, that look back to wanting to remember a time past when it was more peaceful, peaceful and focused on the birth of the Savior, and when you look at it and you go to the Bible, Kevin, there's really no places in the New Testament that I can think of, whether it's the Gospels or the writings of the Apostle Paul or any of the general letters, the Jewish ones at the very end, James, Peter, John, Jude, uh, certainly not in the book of Revelation, where you see uh, believers gathering together to uh, celebrate or worship on the, the birthday of the Savior. No. There's nowhere in the New Testament. Right. Now, we do see them gathering together on the Lord's Day. We see them breaking bread and, and making prayer and giving thanks. Uh, we, you know, we see about the forsaking, and uh, the assembling of themselves together and not forsaking that assembling as they're told to do in the books of the Bible. But we don't see them uh, gathering together to celebrate the birth of the Savior. And so the question was, when did this come about? And I, I think you, you touched on it, John, when you talked about the heresy of docetism. When that first heresy hit around the third century or so, about, oh, well, you know, it's just the Christ. He was just, um, they were Gnostics, as opposed to today, they're agnostics, where nobody knows anything. Back then, they were supposedly Gnostics that knew everything, and they had this higher spiritual knowledge that, uh, oh, yeah, God, God is a spirit, but, but he's too holy to come on the flesh. However, he made this exception with Jesus, and for a short period, you know, the spirit entered him, and then the spirit left him, or maybe perhaps 
the body we saw walking around in Nazareth of Galilee was really an apparition and an appearance and an angel of the Lord, and it was all spirit and no body at all. And that's when the, the believers at that time, and mostly I would have to say the ones in Rome, said, well, maybe we should celebrate the birth because he did have a body right. and a soul and a spirit, and we should start doing that. And it was around that time they began to maybe well-intended, but blended together some heathen things along with, well, the fact the Bible does say he did have a body. And the creeds. Yeah. They came and up the, with creeds. And the creeds. Yep. Apollo and all the others. That yeah, sure. To combat right, that. Right. Yet that's not just an ancient heresy. It's still alive today. Oh, okay. There's plenty of folks running around today that still believe that, that believe that today. I mean, oneness, right? Okay. The absolute oneness that's of God. That's right. That's right. They talk, you know, God uh, modalism. Modalism is, is right? the new way of doing so it. So yep. there's a lot of that stuff running. I mean, I've never seen so much lately. <laughs> there's tons of that running around. Well, it, I think, you know, again, at the, at the time of the end, we're seeing all these heresies uh, just sprout up like weeds everywhere yeah. and people feeding off of them like hemlock. And, and they, and and they going embed all themselves over. with yep. with real believers. Yep. But yet they, they won't tell you. I've had them actually look me right in the face and lie to me. You know, I'm like, do you believe in the Trinity? Oh, I believe in one God. Yeah, yeah. there you go. What, what kind of answer is uh, that? That's not that's not the correct answer. You see what they're doing they, there? And they're they trying are to deceive struggling me. with it. There are more yeah. and more and more of those. Yes. Uh, they they yeah. argue with me on, well, they try to argue with me on Facebook. I just turn them over to the Lord and pray for them. Yeah. <laughs> what can you do? In my uh, simple mind, uh, the I think uh, s centuries ago, man had, might have had a problem with the, with the conception of Christ. <sighs> From the, from the Holy Ghost, and I think they might have a little bit of a problem with that, uh, because again, how could a virgin have a child? But you speed up the clock to twenty twenty, um, that's really not a line. I mean, we we could we could do artificial insemination right now. So you think God can't you know pull pull this off? So uh, and I can understand centuries and centuries and centuries ago, maybe even trying when they started thinking about these things, they didn't want to believe and couldn't get their head around it. But today, Christian, if you're out there and you say, I don't know about the about uh, the um, the conception of Jesus Christ through the Holy Ghost, really? Yeah, you know, again, he's God. Well, th and that's that is a matter of faith. Um, yeah, sure even is. the work done with the test tubes and the cloning and the inseminations, they're still using physical things with physical things. This was God's spirit coming inside the womb of that uh, girl and uh, getting one of her eggs and, and bang, making a, a new body. Uh, the, the body thou hast prepared for me, Jesus wrote of in the book of Hebrews. You, you prepared this body for me to enter into. My soul and my spirit can enter that body that you put together. And it looked like other people's bodies, but it was different. But it's a work of God. And to believe a work of God requires faith. I mean, it, 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 belief in God is dependent on faith. But by grace are you saved faith. through faith. faith. If you don't have the faith... God is not going to reach his arm of grace to you. So I don't have a problem with that. If you believe God can create a universe, I believe he could also Absolutely. inseminate a what, girl by spiritual means. What, yeah, He created the whole universe. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a small you know, trick you know, compared and, to the... And yeah. that, yet there's, you know, I'll ask folks, I'm like, so you believe God created the whole universe? He created human beings with the minds that we have, self-healing abilities. Yeah. You believe all that stuff, right? Yes, but you don't believe God put, could put some ink in a book? That, that, that's yeah. another there's, hurdle there's they can't seem to get over. Yeah, there. there are so, some hurdles you know, that like are tough. <laughs> God created all these uh, physics and mathematics and all the the laws. Why can't He suspend those yeah. if He created them? It, it's interesting. You look at what is that book, Mike? I, I purchased it. It's the big thick book of religions, all the different religions. Um. Oh. You you refer to it every once in a while too. It's got Jehovah Witnesses. It has Mormonism and, and whatnot. It explains it a little bit. It was written uh, years ago by the guy that did the radio program. Oh, Walter the cults. Martin. Yeah, Walter Martin. What's the name of the book? Kingdom of the Cults. Yeah, Kingdom of the Cults. King, yes. Kingdom of the Walter cults. Martin. Yeah. So, folks, you get that the Kingdom of the Cults, and that that's everything. That those are those are religions and non-Christian religions. But what I was always fascinated with, and I started studying in the beginning, and then I kind of just backed off it. I don't have the the ed the education that these gentlemen have. But to me, um, when I do, when I was in corporate America and I would do a chalk talk 
or a board talk and you'd have circles and you'd take off here and here's where we'll start and then this will come off of that and whatnot. But to me, the nucleus is always Christianity and is all these other, as Kevin was mentioning, all these other variations around it and their man's variation, the ones you know of, Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons and, and such, the Catholics, and then the ones that Kevin was mentioning just now. I never heard some of the ones that you just said. There are so many. Think about it, folks. Wouldn't you just look at the nucleus, the one right in the middle, Christ, the King James Bible, Christianity, where you know it, right from, right from God's mouth, Right from here. Yeah, well, why yeah, would we? Go, why do we look at all go, these other these other? The reason go right to go it, right back to the it's source. How easy can it go be? to the source. It's uh, in the book. God gave the apostles. The apostles wrote. God gave His word. They published His word. Why would I want to go to? You know, I deal with folks that always want to go to patristic fathers, third, fourth, <laughs> fifth century. Fathers. Why don't you just go right to the apostles? Yes. It's right here in black sure, and white. You can read it yourself. Exactly. But, you see, can read the words of Jesus Christ. But, John, you know, your point is, why would you counterfeit it unless there was something worth counterfeiting? That's right. There has to be yeah. something that's real, and that's, that's what and they just, do. And I, and, I, and, I, and I asked the listener out there, think about this, and, and I don't know what in the world you just said, the what fathers? Patristic. Yeah. Patristic. Okay, so that's, Capital, again, the church fathers. there are ones, like I said, I church could go fathers. ahead and make a circle and put Christianity, Jesus Christ, all right? Uh, 1611 King James Bible. I could put that right over there. And I could put tentacles. And, and again, the ones we all know, Mormons, Catholics, Jehovah Witnesses. That's the extent of my, yes, of my knowledge. You know. But then you go ahead and, and hear what Kevin is saying. There's so many. And these are man's interpretation. Man has to go ahead and interpret. There's no interpretation. The book, the book reads, you don't need, I don't understand why you have to make a variation of it and so many variations. But I challenge the listener uh, why? Why is it? What is it about the nucleus? What is it about about Christianity and Jesus Christ? It causes all this. And we talk about the spiritual world. We talk about negative spirits. We talk about Satan. And we talk about that they want to take down uh, Christianity until the Lord comes back. Do you, do you not see it? If 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 you know if the, if if every time a kid comes into the schoolyard and every time every bully in the world wants to beat up this kid, after a while you're going to say, why? Why don't you just leave him alone? What? You know why? Why are you doing that? What is it about this kid that everybody in the world wants to beat up? Well, if you're a snake oil salesman, right? And, you, and I want to sell you snake oil, or I want to give you a phony hundred dollar bill. And we're on TV now, so you can it's show white. that. It's okay. white. It's white, right? Uh -huh. You know that's not real. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to do? You have to make something that looks at least reasonably like the real McCoy. Right. So why are these people copying? The real McCoy. So many variations of the real McCoy. But the point is, I'll ask people all the time, you got, you got 520s for this? And they're like, no. I'm like, why not? Well, it's white. Well, if I make it green, will you give me 520s? They're like, no. Why? It's too big. You know. And, and they go through all this stuff. And I go, okay, so if everything is right on here except one thing, is it, is it okay? In fact, I'll, I'll give you a deal. I'll just take 220s for this 100. You know, It's like... One thing makes it a fraud. That's right. That's it only right. takes one thing to make it a fraud. A little leaven, a little, a little leaven, leaven can leaven the whole lump. Those, those yeah. you out there in, in Radio Land, Kevin has a um, uh, a, co a one hundred dollar bill on monopoly. Uh, money. It's monopoly money. <laughs> it's, it's on a, a photocopy, and it's just it's just larger, and it, you can tell it's not real currency. So that's what he's going on, and, and he's saying again, would you give him five twenties for that? It's 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 exactly correct. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a copy of it. But it's not right? real. But it's not real. And, and everybody knows it. People understand money. Right. But when you talk Bible, you know, there's people that really are not, uh, have not studied the Bible, have not read the Bible, and it's easy to be a flim flam man and take advantage of them. Why are there so many false religions? Because there are snake oil salesmen out there. They make a living off this stuff. Right. Not only do they make a living, but they get power. So we, there's a history of that stuff going on for ages. You really don't know. Well, well there's the guy sitting at this table over here. Once we read Scripture, once we read the nucleus, the one, then we left all, we left everything behind that that we believe because that was it. And you can't change this. If you're if you're following around in any of these other religions, I ask you: Have you studied God's word on your own and and proved this religion, any religion that you're in? 
I mean, we could start. We could start picking it apart. You've heard us do it on the show, but we're going to try to keep it towards Christmas. But we could pick apart all these religions, and you can too. But the thing is, you're too lazy to do it. You want to go and you want to sit in a pew that somebody looks like they know what they're talking about, and they just what if they don't know what they're talking about? People thought Charles Manson knew what he was talking about. They thought David Koresh knew what he was talking about. Look what happened there. You need, you have a way, and you're guilty. Jesus tells you, look, let the blind lead the blind, and they both will fall into the pit. You know what that says? Even if, even if, if somebody corrupt is leading you blindly and you fall into the pit, you're in the pit. There's no mercy for you because he makes it easy. Well, going back to the, the what you brought up, Hebrews 10, you know, a lot of folks get messed up and don't understand the incarnation, Jesus sure. taking on that body. Correct. Right? And if we go to John 1, yep. you know, there's all kinds of heresies out there, right? There's people that say, well, Jesus wasn't God before he came here. He wasn't God before the people that say this. This is not true. Sure, sure. Right? So, sure. But the scriptures say in John 1, uh, in the beginning— was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There you go. So Jesus was in the beginning. He didn't have a beginning. He didn't have an ending. Um, the scriptures say that uh, in Hebrews that he was without father, without mother, made like unto yes, us. That's right. And in, in uh, Hebrews 10, uh, it says, 10.5 uh, says, when, when he comes into the world... Okay, sure. he said, "The sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared." Talking me. to his father. So the body him. was prepared for him to take. It was made. It was made for him. Wow. So what was he before that? He was God. In the he was God manifest in yeah. the flesh. First Timothy three sixteen. Yeah. So God came, took a body, became uh, a man, but he is also God. There are He's three. Always been God. That bear record in heaven, heaven, the Father, with the capital F-A-T-H-E-R, he's the Father, the Word with a capital W-R-D, and the Holy Ghost, capital H, uh, capital G, and they were out there in eternity before, there'll be an eternity after, that is the Godhead, and the, and the amazing thing, these three are one, and th that's an, a revelation. It really that, there's really no religion that came up with a, with a revelation like that. God had to reveal that yeah. truth to us. Men either came up with multiple gods or just a monotheistic single god, but a god that's three in one is a revelation of Scripture. Well, well yeah. God had to come here. This is the only way that as the, the perfect sacrifice, because we all messed up. Why did he come here? I've had folks ask me, well, why did he die? Why did he die? He had to come and die because he had to pay for our sin. God will not accept a blemished sacrifice, an impure sacrifice. We can't sacrifice. So God himself, God himself came and paid that penalty for us. And, and, and for the listener out there, when we read John 1, I just love this. And when I first started studying scripture, and this was, this was shown me, uh, in the beginning was the word. The word has a capital W. And the word was with God, capital W, and the Word was God, capital W. Yep. And you, it sticks out, and you say, well, um, the, why is that W uh, capitalized? And I find the word Word other times in the Scripture with, with the small W. And then, you, and then somebody says, think about it. And you say, my goodness, this is Jesus, because Jesus was the Word of God. What was the Word of God? God Verse prophesied. 14. God told us that there would be, in the, in the Old Testament, there will be a, a spirit. What's that now? The first, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. There it is. And we beheld his glory and the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's Jesus. So it's, that's Jesus. And so now you say to yourself, wow, I know, you know, I know, you know, I know about Noah's Ark and I know about the seven days and I watched Charleston Heston part the Red Sea. But in the beginning was the Word, and you change it, Jesus. And the Word, Jesus, was with God. Wow. And the word Jesus was God. Wow. That's awfully deep. You could sit back and meditate on that for a, for a long while. Then everything starts making sense. Yeah. So you have to understand and you have to, and there's good Christian churches, Bible believing, King James Bible believing churches that, that this is, this is, 
they teach this, and this is what you should have been learning. We talked about that chalkboard and the nucleus right in the middle. Once you start reading this in the book of John, and Mike forever says, if you're going to start reading Scripture, don't start in Genesis. Start in John, and then skip a couple of books and go over to Romans, and go back and forth a little bit and get, and get a base. How do you believe um, Noah's Ark and the flooding of the world? Well, once you let these spiritual words work deep inside you, then all of a sudden you look at some of these, some of these uh, books that we know, the parting of the Red Sea and whatnot, and they don't seem so Hollywoodish anymore. They yeah. seem like, no, I get it. I get it. Uh, I just wrote a, a post this morning on the fossil record <laughs> on the Facebook page showing that the fossil record actually agrees with the, the Genesis creation account in chapters 1 through 9 and the flood is what it does and basically the geologic column is just confirming everything with the flood with the fossils at the lowest part were laid down initially and the fossils at the top part were in the water, later waters came in and that every fossil is found or most of them are found in a defensive position like they're fighting a cataclysm that the fossils found instead of like just finding one life form and then then two and then more they all suddenly appeared in the beginning with all their organ systems intact and everything they needed for life and every time a fossil has been found uh, whatever family it's in it's remained dogs have remained dogs cats have remained cats there's no transitional and you study through it and when you go wow this lines up perfectly with what god said the word of god fully formed yeah fully formed they didn't they didn't (laughs) gradually appear and gradually grow yeah (laughs) So, John, you you were talking about, like, why are there so many of these differences in different groups? Right. You know, and I think one of the reasons is uh, we have an enemy that doesn't want you to know the truth. That's right. Right? And so he wants to obscure. He wants to mess up. There's people that say Jesus is just an angel, seven-day of Venice. Yeah. That's you know, what they teach. That's right. Right? Yeah. Uh, there are people that say he wasn't God manifest in the flesh. In fact... They say First Timothy three sixteen. It doesn't say God was manifest in the flesh. You just read John one fourteen, where it says the Word was manifest. Right? Yes. The Word took on flesh, became flesh. So, so I'll ask him, and it says, "And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness." If there's no God who was manifest, where, what's the mystery? Everybody yeah. comes in a flesh. Sure. You're in flesh. But I'm in flesh. You're in flesh. It says God. Yeah. It and, says and God it says in it most in the of English, the manuscripts. It says right? it in the Greek yep. manuscripts. Yep. They have Theos. It's, it's but, all through. There. But it doesn't yeah. make any sense. But let's, so let's, we let's, change that hold, to hold, on, hold on, Kevin, because it's a great point. Yeah. We're coming down to the first half of our of our show, but I want to pick that up because I, I, I want to ask you a couple of questions and, uh, and, and stay on that point. But... Yeah. Oh, oh, well, thank you for joining us on our <laughs> on our weekly program right here Saturday mornings on WECK, the What is Truth uh, show with Kevin Deegan, our street preacher, uh, John Giuseppe just came out of Willy Walker's Chocolate Factory, and uh, Dr. Michael Caesar here. And we're going to be with you for another half hour on the program. And we always invite you not just to listen by way of radio, but anytime during the week, just go to the website, www.graceandtruthchurch.org. Click the sermons tab, and you can watch all kinds of programs, including this one. But stick around for the next half hour. I want to talk a little bit more about the Christmas, and we hope you have a Merry Christmas See in a few moments right here on What is Truth. Verse 31, and the second is like, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
There, there is none other commandment greater than these. Welcome back, Buffalo, to part two of the What is Truth radio show, 7.30 on Saturday mornings at this great station, W-E-C-K. I hope you have your cup of coffee um, and uh, you're listening with this. Uh, I hope you have your Bible with you. And if not, you a pen at least in jotting some of these verses down that we're talking about and that maybe you will take these things to heart and kind of figure out what this this whole God thing is all about because it's so important. I know we're, we're leaning towards Christmas, Christmas, but you know when you have Scripture, you always bunny trail off, and it's wonderful because because one thing leads into the other, and the Spirit, really, the Holy Spirit, just guides you guides you along. But we were talking about Kevin about all these other religions. There's Christianity right in the middle, King James Bible, Jesus Christ, God's Word, and then all these little all these counterfeits, right? And go on, go on to explain well, if about I, if I give you the wrong Jesus. How can you be saved? That's right. Only the real McCoy can That's can save you. Only God manifest in the flesh can pay for your sins. But if I can convince you, well, he was just a great prophet. Well, he was just an angel. Right. Well, he was just whatever. Right. And then right? cause confusion across the board. And, yeah, yes. You know, I've always said to Paul my, was worried about that. He wrote to a young church about that. He said, I, I'm afraid. I fear that that the the, the yeah. serpent who beguiled it's, it's Eve might uh, subtly corrupt your minds from the simplicity and preach another Jesus. Jesus that's right. That's yeah. it, it, uh, so that's 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 what we're talking about. But going back to this thing here in First Timothy three sixteen, God manifest in the flesh. Let me read it to you, mm -hmm. and then um, then I'll tell you where they change it. Yeah. Which it's it doesn't even make any sense. No. So I'm going to show that to you. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up to glory. That's now, who does that sound like to Timothy you? 1 Timothy 3.16. So yes. that's a great verse for the people yes. to know. Now, they're, they're saying, it, oh, it doesn't really say God in some manuscripts, right? All it takes, it kind of looks like an O with a little, in the Greek, it looks like an O with a little dash in it. It's a shorthand for Theos, God. That's God. Right, God. So so they, they have all these crazy stories. Well, on the other side, there's an underline, and it showed through, so they oh, made a mistake. No, and, yeah, but but yeah, there's right. just tons of there's manuscript just, evidence there's, there's for this. Look, look, it I've, doesn't even make sense. I've always said to Mike, we've heard, we've heard the term a needle in a haystack. You, it's so hard to find a needle in a haystack, but guess what? There is a needle in that haystack, yeah. and all these and all these other religions are, is just straw. Like Kevin says, is watering it down and watering it down. It's Satan's way of getting your eye off off what really is going to get you to 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 to, to heaven. And um, you know, it's interesting when I was in the, when I was in the military, I worked with the Titan II missile, and at the time, it was the it was the the largest ICBM that the United States had. And the, the warhead, at least. And when when um, when Reagan came along, and we talk about the missile defense systems in, in Russia, one of the things that I was always taught that brought Russia down was Reagan had this missile missile defense system. They went ahead, Russia went ahead, and, and just spent all their money um, trying to match us and whatnot. But and I'm not sure how it all exactly happened. I was younger then. But here's what I do know: is that after that was all done. We had a way. We had a way. Our missiles, when the warhead detached from the second stage, right, and it was little explosions. And on our radar, what it put it put shrap metal all around the warhead. And on our radar, they all looked the same. So they could follow our missile. Then all of a sudden, when the warhead detaches, and there's a whole bunch of counterfeits all around it that the radars could pick it up now. But in those days, they couldn't. And so a, a missile defense. Wouldn't know which one to hit. Know, it would hit the first one it got. Yeah. Right? And that's how he just destroyed You might get lucky, it was you might like, not. It, it, what it, Satan like, wants to do. It's exactly to, what Satan wants to do. Yeah. Because in that radar, you don't know, but one of those is the missile. Yeah. One of, is, the, is the warhead. One of those 
dots on the screen was the warhead, but you couldn't see it because of all the counterfeits around it. And that's exactly what we're finding here, what Satan is doing. Well, that's what Paul warned us about. I mean, God knew God's a, a step ahead of Satan. He's a few steps ahead you of think? him. And so he told Paul, he said, I want you to warn these people that what's going to come, someone's going to come after you, Paul, and you better warn them that this is how the serpent beguiled Eve. Now he's going to, he beguiled Eve regarding some fruit on a tree back in the garden. But now the real apple of my eye is Jesus Christ. And that's what I want everyone to take a bite of. And he's going to try and detract people away from that. And, and he might come preach another Jesus like the Docetism and the Arianism and all those goofy things that came along. Today, the Muslims, they've got another Jesus. One and a half billion people got another Jesus. They might have another gospel. And that's a lot of the so-called Christian religions. The Catholic religion is a gospel of works. You're expected to keep the sacraments and go to Mass and, and do these things. But but the gospel of Christ, and, and then wait for purgatory, but the gospel of Christ is... It's all... Uh, uh, all other Gospels yeah. are due, but the, the Gospel in this book here yes. is done. All done. Christ so do you mean like by, D-O, by, like do something, yeah. D-O, do, we have to do something, Yeah. but the Gospel in the Bible is done, and it was done, Jesus said, it is finished. It is finished. And uh, this, he paid the price, yes. for by one offering he hath perfected forever That's right. them Amen. that are sanctified. In, in one Hebrews time, 10. one offering. You can't add to it, you can't make it better, you can't adjust it, but it's hard It's hard for people to but swallow. What, what, you mean it's that yeah. easy? It, you mean he did it all? You mean I don't have to do anything? No, you just have to believe. What, That's hard for people to swallow. Let me, isn't let, it? He says this, for in him ye are complete. Complete. Yes, yes, I love that. I mean, verse. it's it's, it's yes. Colossians two yep. ten. Yes. I mean, you're complete but in him. What else do I need? But I don't need anything else. But yes. Paul, like you said, Mike, you said an interesting point. Paul knew this was going to happen, right? Yes. So now you have Christianity. He says, I can't believe how fast you got away from the simplicity that is Jesus Christ. But I brought up over here, and folks, again, if if you're watching us on on uh, YouTube, when we pick up our phones, we're not talking to our loved ones. We do you? We actually we actually use them for work. We have something called Research. a, con a concord. Say that those guys are they're so smart. You could put a you could put a, a word in there and it brings up all the scripture. So it makes us look smart, but it's it's a wonderful tool. But First Timothy one four, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which go. minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. In faith. So do yeah. First Timothy four seven, but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thy, thyself rather unto godliness second timothy 4 4 and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables sure titus 1 sure. not giving heed to jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth boy there's one and finally second peter 1 16 we have not followed cunningly divide fables when we made known unto you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but what I widget witnesses of his majesty. So when people say to you, because Kevin, they'll say it because I've had people say to me, what about coexist? Well, you know, you know, there's a lot of good people in the world, you know, and what makes your religion right? What makes what makes the your religion different than Jehovah Witnesses or Catholicism or Mormon, whatever it might be, or even being a Muslim? And, and right over here, we were told that fables, that old wives' tales, commandments of men were going to happen. Well, he warned well, us. And I'll give you another thing that's different between our religion and theirs. We're not trying to conquer them or decapitate them. That's right. We're trying to convert them by giving them the word of God. But, uh, you know, we you were talking about the fables. Yeah, and, 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 but, and we have the fables. eyewitnesses. But, but, They're eyewitnesses. But, uh, again, again, for the listener out there, ah, there you go. You're trying to convert them. You want everybody to have your belief. No, let me tell you something. We don't get a blender if we convert you. All right. We don't get we don't get a, a free flat screen TV. This is the commandment of our Lord because he doesn't want to see any soul die. And we're saved. We know where we're going. There's just no way we can't even we can't even hurt ourselves. So we're not going. And the Lord says, are you thankful? Do you do you love what I've given you? I want one thing for you. Tell others about me. Of, of go course, out in all the world uh, uh, and, and, the and yes, you, there you go again. You want to convert? Of course, we want to convert. That—that's what God wants you is to be converted 
to the belief of Christ and have the eternal life that only he can provide, and he would like to regenerate you and give you a new spirit. Paul, one day when he was on trial, said, I would to God that not only thou, to the one listener, but also all that hear me this day were all together as I am. In other words, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul came out of religion. Because he, he knows. was sincere about religion. He found out his religion was not the answer. Religion is man trying to work his way to God. He found out that God came down to him, and he bowed the knee to the Lord. Well, if you, if you know a, a snake oil salesman yeah. or a shyster, you know, would, wouldn't you want to protect people and warn them? You know, no, no, don't don't go that way. You know, you, you, you're talking about this stuff here. It's like that, plus you want to help people. Hey, I've got something good I want to show you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to force you. It's it's up to you. It's a, it's a free country. You can do what you want. Right. But but some people just they hear something sounds good and then they repeat it like parrots. Yeah. And that, that's how a lot of this bad stuff. There's a lot of bad things on the internet. People just repeat it. What what I'm telling you is take that hundred dollar bill and inspect it. The scriptures say, study to show thyself approved unto man. Uh, uh, God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. A workman actually puts some effort into what he's doing. You and put some effort into your study. Check it out. Don't just accept things. Don't accept what we say. Open your the book, read it yourself, and see if what we're saying is so. And we, we talked about the uh, those in the Acts that were more noble because they searched the scriptures daily to see whether those things were so. They didn't just, oh, okay, so-and-so said it, the priest said it, the pastor said it, this guy said it, my friend said it. No, they checked it out themselves and went to the source, to the eyewitness accounts in the Bible, and found out. Your example before, when you had that uh, counterfeit bill that we could yeah. identify as counterfeit, uh, obviously you must have gone to a photo stamp machine. You actually put a hundred dollar bill I, down. I buy them at the dollar stores. Okay, I kitty, mean, I mean, it looks toys. like somebody took a, yeah. a hundred dollar bill, put it on yeah. a photo stamp machine, copied it, and it came out black and white. But I mean, it's a picture of Ben Franklin. It looks like yeah. the real thing, except that it's black and white. I was just thinking, if if you and I, or the three of us. Uh, I went with my son. My son's on a trip in Zimbabwe right now in, in the jungles, and he's going in four different areas. If we went out in those remote areas and we passed those out and said, hey, this, this is money. This is American money. You can have it. They might take it gladly, be excited. I mean, why would these people be right. lying to us? They're, they're going to believe this is how the devil gets his work done. And they'll work that around, and they won't know that it isn't a regular currency until they try and take it to a bank or take it to a merchant and we'll look at them and laugh and say, this is no good. And what the devil is doing is he's passing around these phony religions. People are walking around with them. They're okay. But one day when they stand before God with their counterfeits, that's going to be the final day when everything's cashed in and they're going to be sadly uh, going to be mistaken. I, I was going to yeah. say that merchant might be, <laughs> your judgment, the merchant that you say, yeah. you know, yeah. you, so when the Lord judges you, you say, well, I have this over here. Lord, it doesn't work, bro. They, yeah. You know, they yeah. say that folks that work at banks, folks that work with bills, yeah. they get, know the feel, they know the look, they basically study the real McCoy. They don't Scotland study Yard the technique, fakes. You're right. They study the real McCoy. And um, so you need to be careful. Make sure you got the real McCoy. You don't want to have one you, of those frauds. You know, Sir Robert and Anderson- so from Scotland sure, Yard. Yeah. Uh -huh. He was number two in charge of Scotland Yard. And he was training the men for counterfeits, doing exactly what you said. And by the way, you know about him. In studying counterfeits, he studied the King James Bible, and he became a became, solid Bible believer a, yeah. and one of the best authors of Bible books. Yeah. but well, Yeah. It, it, <laughs> going, going back to that First Timothy 3.16, here's what they do. They tell you, well, that really says he who was manifest in the flesh. Well, wait a second. Do you know that there's not even one manuscript in the whole world in existence that says he who? Right. It, it doesn't exist. So where did those words come from? Uh, Abbott and Costello. It's, I it's, saw that. It's on who's on first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he who is not in the text in any manuscript. So they they inserted something that didn't even exist. And there's people that buy that simply because, oh, that sounds good. And so they hear it, yeah. they buy it, but they never checked into it. There's not one manuscript that has that he who in there. So what I'll ask them after that is like, okay, we'll look at this text that says the mystery of godliness. Who, If it is he who, 
Yeah. Who is he? Who, yeah, right? who, would who it is be? he? Who's the mystery of godliness? Who was justified in the spirit? Who preached? Who was preached to the Gentiles? Who who was believed on in the world? Sure. Who was received up in the into glory? We sure. know who it is. It's God manifest in the flesh. But the the point is, is it's easy to somebody that's there's a lot of gullible people. There's a lot of people sure. that just accept things on. Well, so and so said it, or whatever. I don't know what it is. It's and, like, and it, I, I check it out. It, it would allow you to say, "Well, it's Jesus Christ," but it it removes his deity they, because right. Jesus what, Christ could have been just a man. And then, and then you have, and then you have the person that we don't talk about that looks at all these so called Christian religions, and there's just so many, and you know, and they just go, uh, you know, I, I will tell you as a shopper. Oh, I was on, when I'm on the internet, and as a shopper, if you give me too many choices. Like I want to get, I want to get these glasses, and if there's three, I could compare them, see which one I want, and get. But when there's five hundred, give up and walk away. Uh, you know, I tend not to buy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tend to, yeah. I tend to walk away. Yeah. So there's all kinds of reasons that Satan would want to put this out for people. Let's throw a bunch of different options. People will ask you, well, which religion is the true religion? <laughs> right, right. There's so many. I don't know. So just like you're saying, I've heard people say that. So yeah, there's so many do. reasons. Coexist. But it's it's all about keeping you from the real thing. Now, you know, it's interesting. You, that, that's which one is the true religion? Well, let's look at the major religions. Okay, you've got uh, Mohammedism with Muhammad. You've got uh, Judaism with Moses. You got Buddhism with Buddha. Maybe you can call Confucianism with Confucius. You've got Christianity with Jesus, which is the true one. Which one of those five said, I am the way, the truth, and the life? You never heard any one of the other four say it. Besides, which one of the of those five claimed to be resurrected and has the world, uh, a lot of the world believing and coming and singing songs? No one's doing it for the other ones. So there are some things God left behind that are very powerful to attract our attention where God says, come and examine and prove these things. Which, which religion had God come to earth? Yeah, Jesus claimed to be God. Go. He clearly claimed to be God. And there's a saying that either he was a madman, yeah. there's no options. Right, right. He wasn't a good man if he lied and said, I am God. So, so there's no choice but either he... He lied, he's a lunatic, yeah. or he's the savior, the that he's yeah. God yeah. manifest in the flesh. That's what that's what we're talking about, Christmas and all that, the incarnation. Jesus came here and took on flesh so that he could pay the penalty for us if we would just believe. So, so getting back to Christmas, because it is that time, and, and looking at uh, the history of it, what had happened in Europe, as reading through the article, and he did some historical work, was it was getting a little crazy over there in England in 1725. Um, the Anglican minister Henry Bourne said Christmas is becoming just a pretense for drunkenness and rioting and wantonness. Uh, people are more focused on the peripherals rather than the essentials. The Puritans said, we don't even want to keep this holiday anymore. And when it finally landed on the shores of America, it, it didn't do much better. The Virginians hunted and danced and feasted and uh, thronged in the streets in boisterous demonstrations. And, and this type of thing was going on here. There were riots in New York City and Philadelphia with bands of young men going about and eating and drinking. And New York finally in 19, 1828 had to organize a police force to respond to violent Christmas riots. And, and a concerned group of uh, New York people, including Washington Irving, and Clement Clark Moore, who wrote that the famous uh, poem about St. Nick, a visit from St. Nick, uh, began a campaign to get Christmas off the streets and back into the family. And, and they, you know, they started the idea of uh, St. Nick bringing gifts for the children. The poem caught on. The merchants loved it because the advertising in the newspapers right. and, and it said it got to the point where uh, this new tradition by 1870 department stores were outdoing the churches in their religious adornment. And there were statues of saints and angels and choirs. And by the time we got to the 20th century, the stores had abandoned a lot of the religious motif, but they continued right. this marvelous alteration and uh, build up at Holiday, uh, Chicago's Marshall Field Company 
company turned their department store into a glittering fairyland. Santa was on parade. Hollywood came out with the movies, White Christmas, It's a Wonderful Life, Miracle on 34th Street. But even with all that, it's a question is, is this going to be about partying and profit or about spending some time in piety, looking and reminding our family about the Savior? I mean, this is a time, and, and I'll grant you, you won't find uh, Christians in the New Testament, worshiping the birth of the Savior. But God does give two chapters that talks about the birth, Matthew 2 and Luke 2, just to remind us that that his son did come down and did, uh, how did he say it, took upon, uh, it became a form of a servant, like a man. And he, and he took a body on him and he walked and, and he went through 33 years on this planet so that he could know the feelings and the infirmities that we have in these bodies so that he could really be touched with compassion for what we go through, not just academically from a distance in heaven, but to see what it's like to be a, a man and see the problem of, of, uh, pain and and hunger and suffering and, and lust and, you, you and, can't and, tell, and temptation you can't, yeah you can't tell him you don't understand right he understands You'll never understand. understand. he, he understands, understands. He amen amen he suffered that's for right. us. And, yeah. and he understands he understands the temptation of man and it's um it's when you when you think about these things you, you know listener the adam was the first man jesus is the last man uh, it's spiritual when 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 um when when uh eve said to the serpent God said, we can't eat from that tree, we should surely die. Well, what happened? They didn't die. Did they, they, didn't, they, didn't they have uh, Seth and Cain and Abel? And Well, they died spiritually. They died spiritually. That day, that same That's day. That's what God meant. So when you look at these things, say, okay, I get it now. And Jesus said, had to die in the flesh for our spirits. See, it's all our, our spiritual lives are going to be much, 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 much longer than our physical lives. And you have to get an understanding. God is a spirit, and we need to worship him as a spirit. That's what Jesus tells us. And this experiment of the flesh, we don't understand it yet. We will one day. Well, you know, I was watching, I like to watch some comedy sometimes, watching a show, Everybody Loves Raymond, and the little girl asked the father, why are we here? Why, why does God put us here? If we're going to heaven one day, why does he put us here? And Raymond, I have no idea what that is. And he ran as a priest and all kind, and nobody could come up with the answer. The, the simple answer, the short answer is this. God puts us here and gives us a free choice and wants us to decide if we are going to believe what he has told us in his book and receive the gift of eternal life through his son. Uh, yes, he was born our, let's say around the time of Christmas, but more importantly, it's not his birth that saves. It's not his life and his teaching that saves. It's that sacrifice where God will provide himself a lamb. It says in, in Genesis 22 and, and, and he provide himself the lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. And through that death and paying once and for all for sin and saying it's finished so that you and I can be complete in him. He can then give us that gift and our temporary proving ground. And by the way you live in america it's pretty good it's not bad. we're doing fine down here in our temporary proving gown physically but spiritually this christmas what god would like us to do is before we break open the presents with the kids rather than telling them the gifts are from santa claus tell them the gifts are from god the father and god the son and read some of those great chapters in the bible with your children and then let them open physical gifts after they've opened that spiritual gift in their mm -hmm. heart that's that's the desire. Amen. Well, yeah, go, brother. And, and it's not it, it's God that saves. We can't do it ourselves. We were talking Amen. about Jesus either being a lunatic or a liar, or he's God. Or the Lord. He's God yeah. manifest in the flesh. In uh John eight yeah. twenty three, uh, and he said, This is Jesus speaking, ye are from beneath. Okay? We come from this earth. Down here. He said, from dust thou art, and dust thou will return. That's there right. are people, like the Mormons teach, oh, we're going to become gods. I tell them, <laughs> look under your feet. Look under your feet. That's where you're headed. You're not going to run a planet <laughs> somewhere. Right. You can't even run your home. <laughs> okay? He says, ye are from beneath. You see the difference here? He's trying to tell you, I am from above. Right. 
He's God. He says, ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Only God, a perfect sacrifice, can cover your sins. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. I believe that's in First John. You know, and, and by the way, that verse now that was verse twenty three. You were quoting 20, from uh, four, eight twenty three. Okay, and and it's three and twenty four. It's interesting, and and that verse he says, "I am He." That's exactly what God the Father right, was saying in the book of Isaiah. Uh, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe and understand that I am he i even i am the lord beside me there is no savior yea before the day was i am he and it's like god the father and god the son saying we're both god and our joint work together the work of the father and the son the father is sending the love package of the son the son then doing the work the father determining what work needed to be done the son satisfying that work the combination of them together is what's going to bring salvation and you must believe that jesus christ is deity what do you actually believe that you're good enough to get into heaven <laughs> you know? i'm not good enough to get into club well, 51 he's, i mean he is from <laughs> above You're from below. You don't measure up. The scriptures say, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're never going to measure up. You're not going to make it. You're going to fall short. Mm -hmm. But but the listen out there, and you need to be careful because scripture tells us this, uh, men praying, complaining to God that why why is the wicked, why are they prosperous? Why do they laugh? Why do they sing? Why do they gloat? Uh, you know, I'm over here trying to do the right thing. Why? Jesus tells us later, he says, they have their reward. Yeah, that's it. They have their reward. That's right. Because you know why? This is a great God. And if you don't want him, that's fine. I put you on the third. Have a good time. See what you could do. But it's almost like a child playing with a bunch of toys. And one child will put the toy down. When daddy comes into the room, put the toy down. Doesn't give a crap about the toy. Wants to jump in daddy's arms. The other child might just... Not care and just keep focused playing with that toy. Toys, yeah. He's focused on the toys, and the daddy will say, well, "That's fine. He's happy over there. Come on, son, come with me." Amen. You know, and uh, that's that's your Christmas. Amen. Amen. And so, so again, it was an interesting article in search of Christmas, and I think the three of us would agree: if you're looking for the truth about Christmas, you're going to have to look. In the scriptures. Amen. There's where you're going to find out uh, some great chapters to read with the children. Maybe read them first yourself. Get familiar. Matthew 1 and 2, Luke 1 and 2, just uh, four chapters uh, to read around this time of the year. Uh, Think on them a little bit. Uh, Yeah, go out and buy presents for the family. Sit down and enjoy uh, the family. God is a lover of families. Uh, Christ is a lover of families. Amen. And he loves you and he loves your children and he wants you to have a, a merry Christmas. And the center of Christmas, right in the center of Mary and Christmas is the word Christ and he's the Lord, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for joining us on the What is True. Great. Show him that uh, ch- uh, shirt there, brother. See that? Jesus saves. On the back it says, I am the way and the truth and the life. That's from John chapter 14, verse 6. Thank you for joining us on the What is Truth radio program. You can find us on YouTube and uh, find us at www.graceandtruth.com. Church, one word, spell it out, graceandtruthchurch.org. Click the sermons tab and enjoy. Come visit us if you're in Amherst sometime on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning. And until we see you again, do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is true. Amen.